It may seem a little bit early, but here at Sewing Parts Online, we love Christmas. As you can see, we've already decorated and we have projects in mind. So today we're going to do a tutorial on an easy stocking. This can be completed in just under an hour. Hey everybody, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. So let's get started. The first thing that you're going to need is a pattern. Because I'm kind of picky about the style and shape of my stocking, I wanted to give you options. So you can either trace an old stocking that you have, maybe it's tattered and you just need to make a new one, you can do that. Otherwise, there is a free printable pattern. It'll be in the description of this video. Now here's a list of supplies that you'll need. Your pattern, some paper scissors, fabric scissors, a rotary mat and a rotary cutter if you have one, they make it a lot easier some fabric weights, tape if you are printing and using my pattern, your choice of fabric, an air erasable marker, some fabric clips and some pins, and a ruler. Don't forget your iron. If you decide you want to trace an existing one, I like to tape four pieces of paper together, lay your stocking down and then trace it approximately half an inch around the entire thing. The half an inch just accounts for the seam allowance. If you decide to print your pattern, it's going to look like this. It's four pages, and it'll be labeled as A1, A2, and then B1 and B2, so it's four pieces. So I'm gonna take B away for just a moment, and we're going to work on A1 and A2. Now you can see these little marks, on camera, it could be a little bit difficult to see, but when you've got this in front of you, you'll be able to connect these and make a diamond. So you want to take your right piece and place it over the left. And you'll be able to see that diamond through the paper. And then also the black lines will be connecting. Once you've lined that up, you can take a piece of tape. And I like to go right over the seam where you're going to be cutting. So do it at kind of an angle so when you cut it, it'll catch both. Okay, so that piece is done. Now we'll work on the second one. And then we're gonna do the same thing. Take the right one, place it over the left, match up the diamond shape. Make sure the black is lined up, the diamond, I should say the V, the diamond, and the black mark. And now we'll connect the two. Once you've taped that, then I usually will flip it over and put a couple pieces on the back as well, just to make sure that it's nice and secure. And then using your paper scissors, you can cut that out. Now the great thing about this pattern is you can revise it any way you want to. It just gives you a starting point. So it's cute just the way it is, but say you wanted to make it a little more angled, you could just grab a pen and take this part off or make the toe a little bit smaller, whatever you would like. Just keep in mind that the completed project is going to be a half an inch smaller than what you draw out. So the first thing that we need is the lining. You can fold that in half. You can either use your fabric scissors or if you do have a rotary mat and a rotary cutter, that is way easier. So that is what I'm gonna use. You know what, I'm gonna grab a couple of these. If you have fabric weights, those are really convenient. Otherwise, if you have like canned vegetables available, you can plop those on there, it'll hold it tight. Don't move your lining or your pattern, just remove the excess fabric. So I'm gonna grab my pins, or if you'd like, you can use Wonder Clips. So this is definitely a preference. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use some Wonder Clips. Just going to secure it all the way around. I'm only putting a few in because I'm actually going to pin, excuse me, I'm actually going to pin, but I like having it where it's not going to move. I find that it's easiest to mark a half an inch around and then connect the dots. I'm 
Just go all the way around. Now you can just go and match up all the marks. I love this so much because you don't have to be exact. It gives you a little freedom, but the line really does help. Previously, I never did this step. I just used the guide on my machine. But like I said, especially if you're a beginner, this really helps. Okay, here's where I'm going to go and pin. Again, you can totally choose whether or not you would like wonder clips or a fabric clip or pins. Now we're going to work on the outside of the stocking. So these pieces of fabric are 18 by 22. They're a fat quarter. I actually used this Christmas package. One thing I do want to mention is that there's no duplicated designs. So these are all different. But that's kind of fun. I like that because then each side of your stocking is going to be different. But obviously you do not have to use fat quarters. You could use the same fabric on both sides. It's completely a choice, that's why this is fun. So we wanna place right sides together, or the pretty sides. Let's place our pattern on once again and put our little weights on. And grab my rotary cutter and we'll do the exact same thing. remove that carefully just because sometimes there's a little thread that didn't get cut so you just want to be careful of that. Okay, just remove the pattern but leave the fabric as is. Once again I'm just going to clip around to secure the fabric. Now we make those marks again. And this is a half inch seam allowance. Okay, we're gonna go back through and connect those marks. Perfect. Going back through and pinning the stocking together. One thing I do want to mention is keep in mind directional fabric. So just in case you had a little snowman on your fabric, you don't want him standing on his head. <laughs> So now we're going to work on the little loop. I have this little two and a half by eight inch ruler and I found it to be a perfect size. So I actually just place this on here and cut it around. That results in this little piece. Now what you'll wanna do is fold in one quarter of an inch on this side, one quarter of an inch on this side, and then we're going to fold it together. So I'm gonna move some of my stuff so I can press. You know what? I changed my mind. Let's do a half an inch. I had initially tried a quarter inch and I totally forgot that I decided I wanted it a little bit more narrow when I fold it in on itself. So we're doing a half an inch on each side. There we go. That looks better. And then we'll, we'll flip it in on itself lengthways and press. I'm just going to pin this just a couple of times. 
Now I'm going to bring it to the sewing machine and top stitch around the whole thing. If you're not familiar with top stitching, it's just stitching that's really close to the edge and it gives it a nice finished look. Perfect. All right, we've got that done. We're just going to fold this and kind of pinch it. Then we are going to set that aside for a moment. Now we're going to grab our fabric and we are going to sew along both of these. So for this piece, you just want to start, back stitch, go all the way around, come up to the end and back stitch. And then you want to do the exact same thing for this one. Back stitch and then go all the way around and back stitch. So we're going to be sewing a straight stitch and I set my machine to a 2.40 for the stitch length. You've got a couple of ways that you can do this. You can leave your needle in center needle position and then use the line gauge on the needle plate and just follow the half inch marking. Or what I like to do is actually change my needle position to the left and then use the right edge of my foot as the guide. I find that easier. Or you can just follow the lines that you drew, whichever way you want to do it. So once again, we're going to start. We're going to back stitch. And then we're going to start sewing. Now we're going to do the same thing with the outside of the stocking. I'm curious, name one thing that you always get in your stocking. Comment below. As you come up to the end, just remember to back stitch several stitches. Now that these are sewn, I'm gonna go around and cut any excess off and then clip the curves. That just helps the stocking to lay nicely. You can either use the fabric scissors or a rotary cutter. When you're clipping the curve, just make sure that you're clipping up to the seam, not through it. Set that aside, and we are going to do the same thing with the lining. Okay, and clip those curves as well. So now I'm going to leave the liner as is, but I'm going to flip the outside of the stocking right side out. I like to kind of get my hand in there, spread it out, work those curves. It kind of likes to roll in on itself, so you kind of need to work it with your fingers kind of finger press it, and then I do go and press the outside of the stocking once I've flattened this a little bit. You don't have to press the lining, but I do like to press the outside. There we go. We're going to take the lining, like I said, as is. You don't need to flip that right side out. So we're going to work it into the toe. You want to get it in there pretty good and then hold it and kind of push the heel down. So just to make it easier on yourself, I like to match up my seams and use a fabric clip and then maneuver the fabric around.
If you've ever quilted before, I kind of like to nest the seams where one seam allowance is going one direction and one is going the other. And then you kind of tuck them in together. That works out pretty slick. It, it distributes the bulk. There, that makes it just a little bit easier to work with it as you're moving the lining around. Oh, I think I twisted the toe. <laughs> Let's try that again. What did I do? I sure did. How did I do that? Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> I honestly have no idea how I did that. <laughs> what happens on camera, right? <laughs> Okay, that's looking better. Now let's match up those seams. Match up all the raw edges. I didn't provide a pattern piece for the band just because it can vary depending on whether your seam allowance is different or if you did use an old one versus using the pattern. So what we can do at this point is figure how big you want your band to be. Then you're going to double that amount and add one inch. We double it because it'll be folded and the one inch is taking the seam allowance into consideration. So I want mine to be two inches. So what I did, I did four and then added an inch. So we've got five inches. So if you look at this, I'm gonna try and show you on my grid here, it'll be two inches exposed and then I'm going to be sewing a half inch seam allowance. So that will leave you with those two inches. So that's what I'm choosing, okay? So I know my width now. Now I need to know my length. So you're going to want to measure across here, but you're going to double it and then add a little bit more for good measure. When I fold it in half, it's gonna be a little bit extra so I can do my seam allowance. So I'm going to fold this in half and press it. And then I'm going to grab my marking pen and lay it right with the side. And then also mark right with the side here. Just mark that. Then we can sew that. In this case, since it's not an exact half inch, I'm just going to put it as center needle and I'm going to just follow the line that I drew. Remember to backstitch. That was a little excessive. You only need about three back stitches. <laughs> I get a little carried away sometimes. You can just cut off the excess to eliminate some bulk. I'm going to open up this seam and I'm going to press this. This once again is just helping to distribute the bulk. So now with the wrong side out, we're going to flip this make a band here and bring the raw edges together. I'm going to hold that there and work my way around. That makes it a little bit easier. Kind of just have to work with it, that's all. Kind of see that it's laying nicely now. And I'll be lining up the seam with the seam on the stocking. So I'm going to keep the seam on the left-hand side, kind of straighten it out, and then just give it a, 
a little pressed. So now we're going to take our stocking, we're going to open it up, and I'm going to align the seams. And just kind of make sure that they didn't move too much. Good there. And this is going with the nice folded edge inside the stocking. And you'll be lining up all of the raw edges. See how that works? They're all the ugly side. And with this, I like to kind of scooch it in, bring it all the way down, lined up with your stocking, and then kind of straighten it and make sure it's fitting nicely. Move it down a little bit. And then once it's evenly distributed, then pin over here on the right side, and then you can continue securing it around the rest of the stocking. I should have put some Christmas music on. Okay, now we're going to grab our little loop. And we've got it this way, so you're going to want it on this side of your stocking. Open this up and carefully on the seam, you're going to be feeding it in. So the ugly side of that is going to be with the raw edges as well. It's going to be tucked in. But you want to make sure that it's between the lining and the band. So we're going to center that nicely. And kind of pinch this so it doesn't move too much. Release that one. And then I'm going to move the band and expose the lining. And then I'm going to put the pretty side in first. Center that on the seam. And then bring that band seam right in the middle. It's quite a bit of bulk there, but it'll be fine. Okay. And now we're going to do a half inch seam allowance around the entire thing. So at this point I find it easiest to go a little bit before that bulky seam. Get that scrunched in there. This can take a little finagling. I'm going to use the edge of my foot as the guide and I'm going to move my needle to where it would be a half an inch seam allowance. And you've got to kind of work with it as you go. I'm going to slow down my machine a little bit. Start and back stitch. And I don't want to remove this wonder clip quite yet. Now we can do it and kind of work our way over that. Once I'm over the hump, I want to reverse it. Just because this is a point of strain, you don't want it to rip out. And then go back again. You don't need to worry about speed. Just make sure that the bottom layer is laying flat and that the other part of the stocking is out of the way. And then slowly sew your half inch seam allowance. Once you come up closer to your, your fabric clip, you can just stop, remove your clip, readjust your fabric, make sure it's laying flat, and then continue to sew. Once you come up to the end, back stitch. And stop. Now that we've sewn that, you see this kind of ugly area. We're going to hide that by flipping this over. And then because you were between the band and the lining, this comes out perfectly. Look how nice that looks. And wiggle that down a little bit just like you did before. Kind of use your fingers to roll the fabric. And then once you've got that 
rolled, we'll give it a good press. You finished your stocking. It looks so great. You can even hand stitch somebody's initials on here or use your machine and embroider somebody's name. Have fun with it. I hope that you enjoyed making this Christmas stocking. I love showing you how to do it. If you're still looking for a fall project, make sure to check out our tutorial on the fall fabric pumpkin. Until next time, happy sewing everybody.